Hey guys, it's Josh Wolf from Magic Craft, and I'm going to show you now how you can run Minecraft for type 1 diabetes and how you can even modify the code so that you can dev on it and make your own kind of changes. Minecraft for type 1 diabetes is a mini game written to run inside Minecraft and it uses our Magic Craft uh, code and our Script Craft modular architecture. So probably the easiest way for you to get a version that if you just want to play it yourself is, well, let me show you the things that you're going to need first uh, to have this thing run. So you're going to need to install a couple of things on your computer. The first thing you're going to need to get is you're going to need to get Docker. Now Docker is kind of like a virtualization solution. It's a containerization solution that allows you to run kind of like appliances on your computer. So we've provided a Minecraft server for MCT1 that runs as a Docker image. So you're going to go to docker.com. That's where you're going to get your uh, Docker installed on the machine. Let's have a look. I might have to. No, are we good? Good. So Docker. Docker.com. You go to docker.com. You have to create an account uh, at Docker to get it. It's free, but you need to have a, an account to log into. I might just switch over to using my phone because it's going to be faster. Altered Beast. Here we go. Uh, uh, uh. Docker. So I'm switching over to my phone to get a good internet connection. I live in an apartment building in South Brisbane in Australia, Queensland. And we have a shared uh, Wi-Fi in the building that's sometimes quite slow. So I use my phone. Now we go to Docker. And, okay, it's taking me to hub.docker. Let's try www.docker.com. Enterprise application containers. Sign in. It's taking me back to the hub again. How do I actually download Docker? Let me try Google download Docker. Uh, 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 Docker for Windows install. Anyway, so I Google download Docker, Docker Desktop. I'm on a Mac, so it takes me here to this page. So I can download for Mac or I can download for Windows. You can also get Docker for Linux as well if you're running a Linux machine. So you need to get Docker installed on your computer. If you're on a Mac, you'll end up with something like this running, which means that you've got Docker Desktop running. So you need Docker. The other thing that you need is Node.js. Node.js is a, like a JavaScript engine. So here you can um, download it. When I'm using Docker, uh, I use NVM to install it. So NVM node. Node version manager, it's called. Uh, this one here, I don't know if you can do it for Windows, but I use it on a Mac. And the installation's pretty simple. You just run this command here, and it installs it. And then once it's installed, you've got to do a few things. All the instructions are in here. So those are the two things that you're going to need to get, Docker and Node. And then obviously the other thing is to play the Minecraft game, you're going to need to have a copy of the Minecraft Java client. So you can get that from Minecraft.net. If you're wondering why my um, everything looks kind of dark mode on my computer, I've got this this thing called Dark Reader installed, so I can uh, make the entire internet dark mode, which is pretty cool. So you can buy it here; it's 35 bucks. If you're in Australia, you can go to JB Hi-Fi and get yourself a, um, a a gift card, which is 25 bucks. So you just download that. So those are the three things you need: Docker, Node and Minecraft client. Okay, once you get those down, if you just want to play it without devving on it, then what you need to do is you run npm i minus g mct1 dash server. This will install an mct1 server on your machine that you can that you can run. Okay, so it's bringing it down. So while it's installing this, I'll show you a fourth thing which is optional but which I recommend for you to get, and it's called Portainer. Portainer.io, I think. Yeah, Portainer. So what Portainer does is it gives you a um, like a, a web GUI to control Docker. This is what it looks like when it's installed home. So you can control your Docker containers. 
Portainer. So I'll put links down in the description for all of this stuff. Let's go back here. Okay, MCT1 server is down. So you can see it says type MCT1 server start to start. So I can go MCT1 server start. Now it started immediately on mine. On yours it's going to take a little longer because it'll pull the Docker image down from Docker, the Docker Hub. Now if I go to Portainer and I have a look at my containers, you can see there's an MCT1 container running and I can look, this little icon here shows me the logs for the container. So you can see here it says uh, the Minecraft Eula is accepted, it's starting with 2 gigs of RAM and it's downloading the original jar. So it needs to download the Minecraft jar in order to, to run so it hasn't quite started yet. It's still doing this download, it'll take a little while to start. So while it's doing that, uh, I'm going to show you how you can it's going to download, we'll start the game, I'll show you it running, and while that's happening I'll show you how you get the code for MCT1 and do your own development on it. So what you want to do here is you want to install something called SMAC, MC, uh, sorry, NPMI minus G, SMAC. So SMAC stands for the Scriptcraft Modular Architecture Controller and it's a program that you can use to control these kind of um, Minecraft appliances that we've built and work with with the code for MCT1 and your own mine, Minecraft mods and games so while that's happening we're going to go over to github.com forward slash magiccraft um, another way you can do this is you just go to github.com and then we're going to go search or jump to and I'm just going to type in magic craft that's M-A-G-I-K-C-R-A-F-T magic craft and then we'll go down to users there we go magic craft so we'll click on magic craft and we're in here now what we're after is this MCT1 so to do the development on MCT1, you're going to need to install Git on your machine. Let's have a look. Install Git. Git is a source control uh, system for, so you can install it with Homebrew on a Mac. Um, install Git on Windows. So there's five things. Docker, Node, um, the Minecraft client, and then for doing the dev work, your Portainer, and get so it's pretty easy for you to google that stuff up and I'll put links okay so once we're here we're gonna clone it and from github you can get the github desktop client and there'll be a link there that tells you how to get it or you can use the command line let's try this open in github desktop it's in here I've already cloned it out, so I'm just going to find my local clone. SMA MCT1. Ting, here we go. Good, good, good. Okay, so I got it cloned out locally. Let's see how our MCT1 server is going. There we go. Started. It started. So the MCT1 server has started, so I now go to my Minecraft launcher. Tell it to play the latest release, 1.13.2. Clicked on play. Activity monitor. I can hear my fans going pretty hard on the machine. I wonder what everything's energy impact. Bedrock launcher 39.1% CPU kernel task oh, the bedrock launcher is I'm going to close this one. This is Minecraft personal edition or pocket edition 
let's go back to this one what on earth is this doing? here we go taking a little while to start now the launcher comes up and I'm going to need to connect to a server like a remote multi-user server so multiplayer and you can add the server but I'm going to go direct connect here and I go 127.0.0.1 that's the network address of your machine and that works on, on every machine 127.0.0.1 and then I click join server now if you look in the background down here in the log you can see I've joined the server I'm on the server so I'm on the server and to start the game should have seen a message actually I type in slash quest mct1 nope it didn't work let's have a look something wrong here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like there's something wrong with that MCT1 image. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that. <coughs> Disconnect. Now, what on earth could be wrong with this MCT1 image? Well, let's have a look. Okay, file, new window, file, open, open. So the MCT1 server image is built from workspace. It's in the SMA stuff. MCT1 server. It's built from here. This is also on GitHub as well. install pulls down the worlds let's have a look at the image in here so if I go to containers here's the MCT1 container that's mounted onto there the worlds are mounted Okay, I see what's wrong. I made a change to the image. So, let's look for forward slash server. Here it is here. Hmm. I changed the name of the directory. Now, if I go back to MCT1, the container. I can actually log into the container from here. Okay, it's underscore server underscore. That's the change. Probably the easiest way to do it is if I do this const server directory equals underscore server underscore like that. And then where this is, I put it like this. we go Okay, that's what it's getting them from. And then it's mounting them into their destination, destination. 
Okay, cool. Yep. Let's update that. Okay, so we're going to say update server directory. Save that, push it to GitHub, terminal, and then I'm going to publish it. Publish a new version. I'm going to stop the one that's running, so MCT1 server stop. Mm -mm -mm -mm. and then npm i minus g mct1 server to get the new version okay it's going to pull down this updated version of the package I'll start the server again and this time it should work the reason I changed the name of the server directory is um, if you had a package that had a folder that was called server it would get confused about where it was looking for it so the easiest way for me to fix that was just to change the base name of the server directory. Okay, great. So this is part of what you'll see when you do it. I'm downloading the latest version of the MCT1 Worlds from Amazon S3. Okay, so while that's happening, um, we installed that Smack program for devving on it. Let's go back and have a look at GitHub. So this is MCT1, the code for MCT1. And then on GitHub also is that code I just updated, which is the code for MCT1 server. So that's in magiccraft forward slash MCT1 server. Here it is here. And here's, here are like the instructions on, on how to run it. How are we going? Uh, it's a, it's not that big a, a zip file. It's about 60 or 70 megs in size. So if you've got a fast internet connection, it'll come down a lot faster than this. Fast.com. Let's see how fast my phone is. Yeah, this should be pretty fast. iTunes. Okay, while that's coming down, I'm going to show you how the Smack controller works. So let's create a new tab in my terminal. So I have this thing called Smack. There it is. Now if I go to where I checked out the MCT1 code itself, that's an SMA, MCT1. Cool, LS. Now in here, so the first thing you do is after you pull down the the MCT1 code, you've got to run npm i, and that's going to install all of the dependencies that it needs. 1,243 packages. Okay, now that that's down, I think we can look at the package.json file. And in here... Nope, not in here. Let's have a look. Dev server. Yeah, okay, so I go into dev server now, and then ls in here. Yeah, there's a package JSON in here, and there's also a nugget JSON for pocket edition. I'll show you pocket edition in a second. It doesn't actually work yet, but with the pieces. So inside this package JSON, there's an SMA server config. Currently set to nugget. Get status. I don't think it'll look like that when you download it. No, it won't. That's cool. So I'm going to, you won't need to do this, but I'm going to edit this package JSON. Uh, uh, uh. And I'll change this to bucket. Bucket. Okay, so inside the dev server directory, you run smack. Start. And that'll start the dev server with the MCT1 code loaded into it so that you can modify the code while it's running and I get that I'm like showing you two different things at the same time like how to run the MCT1 server which is like if you don't want to dev on it you just want to play it locally you can just install MCT1 server and then do MCT1 server start 
if you want to dev on it, you got to check out MCT1 from Git, and then you've got to install Smack, and then you know install the dependencies with npmi, and then do Smack start in the dev server directory. 62%. Ah, it's doing both in parallel. Smack start. Okay, so what the Smack start does is it starts the appliance, the Minecraft appliance, and it mounts the MCT1 code into the appliance. This one's different from MCT1 server because, you know, you can see it's piping out the, the logs straight to my console here. Uh -uh, so this is all coming up. Let's put that one there. Put this one here. Okay, loading complete. So if I now go back to my Minecraft launcher, tell it to play. Cancel, it's already running, it's over here. Okay, so direct connect 127001, join the server. Connecting to the server, logging in, encrypting. You can see here it's telling me I'm connecting. Okay, let's go quest MCT1. Now it's going to start the Minecraft Type 1 Diabetes game. Here we go. You can see it started the game. My fans are going kind of nuts on the machine because this Minecraft Java edition uses up a lot of uh, resources when it's running. So the game is running now. And there's kind of like a, a prologue here that takes place in this village, and then the game proper kicks off a little bit after. Do a bit of exploring in here. So I've got my own Minecraft server running on my machine, and I've got uh, MCT1 running in it. So this is the the one I'm running right now is the the Smack controlled one, which is the one you use if you want to modify code and write your own kind of stuff. Oh, look at all these goodies here. What's all this? What are these things? Oh, they look like horses. Okay. <laughs> Bodiless horses. It's just floating heads. It's kind of weird. Have an apple. How do I feed this guy? I don't know. Yeah, he says storm has started, so this is the beginning. Oh, and I got struck by lightning. Now I have type 1 diabetes. So you can see I got a blood glucose level and an insulin level. And there's a zombies coming. But I've got these magical snowballs that I can use to kill them. Wasted. Ah, there's a wither. There he is. I can get him with some lightning bolts. But not only is there the wither, but there are more zombies as well. And the wither. So yeah, this uh, this level was designed by Katie Morgan and John Dillon, and the coding on this level was done by Tim Marwick. And I'll show you uh, uh, I'll show you through the code in a minute. Once we get this MCT one server down, I'll start it with that version, which is like the non-dev version and then I'll also show you how we do the dev how you can do the dev work on here to make modifications to MCT1 it's the end of the first level I 
I'm in the jail. Okay, so here's what we can do. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to dev on it. If we go to here and then I'm going to open the MCT one that I checked out of Git. So I checked it into SMA MCT one. Open. Now when the dev server is running, which is this server here, if we go into Portainer and take a look, so we go back to containers, you can see we're running an MCT1 dev server here. Now if I go down to volumes, you can see that MCT1, my checkout from Git, is mounted into the server image in here. So what I can do is I can go into here my VS, this is Visual Studio Code, which is, you know, it's what I recommend for doing dev work on this code base. So I've checked out MCT1. I've done NPM I to install everything that I need to be in here. And then the other thing I need to do is NPM I minus G TypeScript to get TypeScript on my machine. I've already got it, so that was pretty quick. Now, let's have a look at the code and we'll change something and, and see the change happen. So in auto load, this is all the stuff that gets loaded up automatically. Now there's one file in here called playerjoin.ts. Now in playerjoin.ts, this is when you join the server, it'll print out this message. So it prints out, welcome to MCT1 made with love by magiccraft.io. Type quest MCT1 to start the quest still going. Okay, so um, it's going to put a blank line in there, so we'll put something in this blank line. So this is a customized version. Save that. Now down here I need to go TSC minus W, and that's going to compile this TypeScript into the JavaScript that's needed to run. Okay, so it's compiled. Now I go back to here, and in my Smack console, I'm going to go TS on, and then that turns on TypeScript mode, so I can now execute TypeScript directly in the Minecraft server, and I'm going to tell it to refresh. So now it reloads my customized version. I'm going to go back to the game, which is this one, back to the game, and then I'm going to go I'm just going to quit from the server, disconnect. And then I'm going to reconnect again. Direct connect, 127001, join the server. And you can see it here. This is a customized version. Which came from here. Here's the MCT1 command when you go like, uh, oh, that's here's the quest command. So when I do quest MCT1, this is the code that runs. So let's make a change to that command quest. Uh, quest name. <clears throat> so I'm going to say if quest name equals mct1 make it double equals actually then echo to the player it's going to send a message to me you are about to start the mct1 quest save that see my transpiler transpiles it again back to the game here so we can get rid of that one goodbye get rid of that back to the game so disconnect now if I direct connect again join the server oh that's right I gotta refresh right so I go in here and then I type in let's go up arrow refresh
go back to the game slash quest mct1 you're about to start the mct1 quest so you see that's how you can uh, do live development on the game you run your typescript tsc minus w in your terminal and then you just modify the code save it go over to here and then type in refresh and that refreshes so you remember you got to do ts on to get the typescript mode on so in here you can do things like um let's have a look what can we do well if i go const utils equals require utils and then I can go um, utils dot player and then I'll give it my player name so in quote Cita party there you can see there's a player so if I get that player and then I do get name it's my name what else can I do to the player well let's see what interesting things we can do if I go to bucket.magiccraft.io and then I look up the player these are events players interface player okay so here are some methods that I can do. So I'm going to look for a set method because that's going to do something interesting. Let's have a look. Player list sets the name, sets the current time, sets the type of weather, uh, set sprinting, set walk speed, particles, update command, start sound. Oh, stop sound. Is there a start sound? No show the player, set walk speed, set total experience set the player time, that could be interesting uh, let's do set food level okay set the food level so let's have a look at my, my food level currently see my food level is pretty high here so I'm going to set my food level low Okay. Uh, set food level. So set food level zero. Back to the game. Food level zero. Now, if I go here and set food level, I don't know, a hundred. Yep, I did it. If I go back, you can see my food level is now on a hundred. So I can directly execute, you know, JavaScript slash TypeScript right here in the console. And this is a great way to, like, try stuff out. Okay, 50 is too high. Let's try um, 5. Okay. So there you go. That's food level 5. And food level 10. Okay, so it's up to 20 food level 20 that'll be full and if I go 18 it should be one less than full 18 there you go each of those is worth two so I can write code in um, MCT1 or I can write my own plugin as well and then uh, use that I'll do another video to show you how to write your own plugins okay that one's updated so I'm gonna stop this one here so if I go um, TS off, or well, can I? Maybe I can just do smack stop from here. Let's see, nope, I gotta do TS off first, and then I gotta go smack stop. It's gonna shut down the server, so I should see myself get disconnected because the server's gonna stop, and I'll say like lost connection or something. There we go, back to the server list. So in here, I can go MCT1 server start. Now, this is the server that's not the development server, it's
it's just like a, a server for you to try it out and play it. The MCT1 server has now started and if I go back to Portainer and have a look at my containers, see the MCT1 server, let's look at the logs, here we go, starting up. So we'll go back to here, direct connect to the local one. I'll wait for the script craft to start so that it can load MCT1 so that when I join it'll give me the messages and stuff. And I should actually put something into MCT1 server so it tells you when it's ready because it takes a little while for it to start. Okay, it's ready. It'll be pretty easy because what I'll do is I'll, at the end of that loading sequence, there we go, quest MCT1. At the end of the loading sequence, I'll have it write a file to the file system. So I'll, I'll delete it as soon as it starts, and then when the server's con completed loading, it'll write the file, and then it will be able to tell you that it's ready. So here we're playing using the MCT1 server. So I'm going to stop that server, and I'm going to show you one more thing. Shutting down the server in Portainer, we we'll, should see some kind of shutdown in here. Containers. Disconnected. And then back to Portainer, if I refresh my list, it's gone. Okay, so... If I go to the MCT1 dev server, you see there's a nucket.json here. Now if I go smack start minus f nucket.json, it's going to start a Minecraft Pocket Edition server with um, with MCT1 loaded. So I'm going to close my Java client, and then I'm going to open the Minecraft Bedrock Edition client. So to get the Minecraft Bedrock Edition to run on your laptop or your Windows machine, um, you've got to grab this thing called MCP Launcher, Minecraft Pocket Edition Launcher. So if I go to Minecraft Pocket Edition Launcher dot read the docs dot io, tells you how to get started and download it. So on a Mac OS, you get the pre-built binary. And then the other thing is you need to own a copy of of Minecraft Pocket Edition from the Google Play Store. So if I go to apps, search for Minecraft, dun dun dun, there it is there. So you can see it's installed. So you buy it from here. I'm not sure how much it is, not that much. And once that's downloaded, you can start it. Minecraft Bedrock Edition Launcher, play. You can see my pocket, my Nucket server is started here. Now we don't have MCT1 working on, um, okay, play. It's not working, we're, we're working on it right now to get it working on this, so you can play it on your tablets or your phone. And you can see a whole lot of errors coming up here. And that particular problem is because the world format has changed in between. Whoops. Hang on. Let's pull this thing back up here. Resume the game. What am I looking at? Oh, I'm underwater. Okay. Yeah, the world format has changed. between um, the Java version and this Pocket Edition version. But we should be able to do the same kind of thing as before. So if I say TS mode on, and then um, let's try the same thing. So const utils equals require utils. Now this is from ScriptCraft. So we've built on top of ScriptCraft, which is an open source project for JavaScript in Minecraft. So I've got utils and then I say utils dot player 
and then my name get name let's go back to the game so you can see my food level so we'll do the same thing again set food level I'll set it to two so I should have one thing left there it is and then set food level to 20 and it's back up Let's see if I can set the game mode set game mode um, game mode to mm, I don't know if I can pass it a number no I can't I gotta give it a game mode okay if I go to play.magiccraft.io I have I have the code for setting the game mode in here okay it's in something called GM okay I gotta get the game mode so I just do this. That's a weird thing in front there. Get rid of that. Class not found. Pocket game mode must be different. Okay, this is where you gotta like this is where you're gonna need tutorials to show you how to do this stuff. Um, so it's a Nucket game mode. I wrote this code the other day to get this to work. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to write some tutorials to show you how to do a few basic things because you're going to have to really kind of Google around and dig into source code to figure this stuff out. But anyway, that's what programming is. It's Googling a lot and looking in other people's source code. So if I go into my IntelliJ ID, I can look through the source code of the Nucket server, which is the server that we use for the Pocket Edition. So I open it in this window. not this one. Nugget. Okay. Let's have a look for the game mode. Game mode, game mode, game mode. Right here. Get rid of this. Find game mode. One here. Easy way to do it. Find and path. game mode there we go get game mode really what we're looking for is set game mode so let's have a look for set game mode Game mode from string case zero one C it's a game mode. There's a game mode like an enum somewhere in here. Let's have a look. Well, there's another clue in here which says um Okay, there's no bucket game mode in the Nucket server, but that earlier error said 
Here we go. Pocket player. Game mode. Method. Handle. Okay. So actually, let's have a look in pocket. This window. So set game mode. And it was a method on the server. Here we go. Pocket game mode. <laughs> a game mode. It's a pocket game mode. So I'm doing it on the pocket player. So let's have a look at the pocket player. So set game mode. Welcome to the world of programming find out what this type of game mode is. It says it's an org bucket dot game mode. Package org dot bucket. Org dot bucket dot game mode. Org dot bucket dot game mode. It's an enum. set game mode and we've got to provide it with a game mode pocket game mode to nucket game mode let's go to this I think I remember how I did this the other day uh, implementation okay so it takes an int Okay, so that one takes an int. Set game mode. And that's a method on the server? No, it's on the player. Okay, so I think I can do this. I think I can get the Nucket player like this. Nope. Anyway, I'll, um, how about if I do it like this, double underscore plugin, dot server, dot nucket, that gives me the directly the nucket server, get player, and I'm definitely making this stuff up right now, let's try that. Okay, so I can get the player like that. Now, once I get the player, if I go set game mode, and creative was one, one. Set game mode is not a function, so the player doesn't have a set game mode on him. And knock it. Anyway, this is how you kind of discover how stuff works um, at the console. It's kind of cool to be able to just like directly program here and try stuff out. Bedrock launcher. So I got like a pocket edition here. You can connect your uh, tablet to your computer. You won't be able to use the one two seven zero zero if you're using your tablet. To do that, you're going to have to do something like if you're on a Mac, um, hold down the Alt key, click on the network icon, and then you've got your IP address down here. That's the address that you need to use for your tablet to connect to the server that's running on your computer. Anyway, uh, hopefully this gives you some kind of uh, guidance on, on getting started and I'll make some more tutorials and the first one that I'm going to do is how to set the game mode for, uh, for both Bucket and Nucket. The Pocket Edition and the Desktop Edition. I like using this Pocket Edition personally because it, it doesn't use as much energy as the, the Desktop version does and also, you know, more people these days are using this um, pocket edition but with with smack and with magic craft you can write plugins and mini games that will run on both the desktop and the tablet so we've, we're writing it in such a way that it enables you to target both platforms with a single code base which is pretty cool so there you go there's like a kind of a, a, a little bit of a tour of MCT1 getting it running using MCT1 server 
and getting your machine set up so that you can modify the code and then run modified code on your machine. Look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the uh, comments box below and remember to like and subscribe. See ya.